Hey guys, welcome back. More than a week late, I'm finally reviewing the first three episodes of Andor, and immediately after this I'll be reviewing episode four of Andor. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert, I am not... Let's just say the production value definitely outweighs the enjoyment of it for me. I did not find more than a grand total of maybe five or ten minutes per episode to actually be enjoyable. Uh, Star Wars is an escape for me. I like the morality tale of it, the characters, the classic tale of good versus evil, and of course, you know, music and costumes and all that. Um, the music and production values were definitely pretty good. The acting's been spot on so far. Um, the script, for the most part, has been okay, but it's just been... Lots of hidden agendas and deception and whatnot. And I have to say, I sort of enjoyed the first three episodes, well, parts of the first three episodes, better than the fourth episode, because the first three episodes had flashbacks to Cassian Andor's childhood, even though it doesn't quite track, since he said he's been in this fight since he was five, six years old, a little guy. He was way older than that in the flashbacks, so that feels almost like a Rogue One retcon, which I'm not a fan of because Rogue One sort of grew on me. <laughs> so my favorite scene in the first three episodes is, is definitely all the flashbacks to Kalani when Cassian, aka Casa, was you know trying to fit in with the, this older group of kids going along on was probably like a salvage mission, but I'm not really sure. We never find out, there's no subtitles, we never find out why they go to that um, downed wreckage, whether it's a coming of age or because the Empire previously strip mined their planet, well at least a portion of it, if they were trying to get revenge or what. There's, we have no idea what their motivation was for going there in the first place. My favorite dialogue out of the three episodes was definitely from the droid, B2 Emo. Um, <laughs> Uh, Cassian's asking the droid what his adoptive mother, apparently, said about his whereabouts when he was in, where he was supposed to be, and he said something like, she said you were out ruining your reputation with friends of low character. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just, I really like that piece of dialogue. I thought it was fun. Um, my favorite, speaking of which, he's my favorite new character of the series, B2 Emo. I like him. Um, I hope we get to see more of him, even though the poor old droid is definitely worse for the wear. He's beat up and he's got a stutter and he needs some TLC. That poor droid. I, I really like him. He's definitely my favorite new character. Um, that being said, I'm going to score the technical aspects of it. Cinematography was pretty good, 7 out of 10. Music was one of the standouts, 8 out of 10. Uh, eight out of 10. Characters, fairly well developed. Everybody's got an agenda, so that's an 8 out of 10. Story, not exactly my cup of tea, but good, objectively speaking, uh, 7 out of 10. So that gives the first three episodes of Andor a total technical score of 7.5 out of 10. Note, I'm not rating anything like the enjoyability or the morals of the characters. Otherwise, the score would be much, much lower, because <laughs> I have to say I'm not a huge fan of that. So I will see you again. Uh, reviewing episode four of Andor. I'm hoping things look up. I'm torn as to whether or not to keep giving this another chance, but I'll tell more, I'll talk more about that in the review. For, <laughs> I will talk more about that in the review for episode four of Andor. And the worrying in the background is the washing machine and the dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, I've got a big mess to clean up. At any rate, I'll see you then, and until next time, this is the Clumsy Jedi signing off.